So, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Joel Brock. I am a tech consultant for CDS Consulting Co-op. I also happen to be a board member uh, at People's Food Co-op in Portland, Oregon. So, um, I have a bit of both sides of perspective on building reports and then also can just say, uh, can speak to the importance of, of using graphs and using them effectively in your reports, uh, your monitoring reports and your end reports, um, because tables full of data, um, while they may tell a more detailed story, um, board members really like graphs. <laughs> but, um, but displaying that, table, that data in a graphical way that makes a lot of sense and tells a story can be really effective and a great addition to your report. So I wanted to show uh, you all a couple different ways to include some simple and effective graphs in your report, specifically in Microsoft Word. Uh, and then I'll touch a little bit on building graphs in Excel. Um, but for example, we have this simple sales growth graph. Uh, showing sales growth against uh, a benchmark. Um, and so we're going to just step real quickly through the process of creating a graph like this and uh, customizing it to suit your needs. Um, so we're going to start with a blank document here and I'm just going to add a graph in really quickly. In Microsoft Word they make it very simple for us. I'm going to simply place my cursor where I want the graph and under the insert tab I'm just going to insert a chart. Um, now there's lots of options here but I'm going to stick with a simple line graph for now. And you'll see that it brings up Excel and a little table with some sample data in it. Um, so I'm going to edit this table over here and we can watch the graph change over here. And uh, I'll show you how we can turn this into a really simple graph like the one we just saw. Um, first, if we look at the Excel table here, uh, we'll see the little blue border. If we resize that, um, we can change how many sets of data we're displaying. So we're just going to show two. Um, so now we've got two columns of data and four rows, and we can rename these, uh, and you'll see as we do that that they uh, will update on the chart in Microsoft Word. So let's make Series 2 our benchmark because it's red, and uh, Series 1 will be our actual data. And then you can see down here in Microsoft Word, that the, the data sets have been renamed. And here we can rename uh, the, the labels across our x-axis, and these can be um, years or quarters or whatever makes sense for your particular report. Great. Um, the hard part's done. Now we just need to put in the data. So in our case, uh, let's fill in the benchmark here, and we'll put in some. Oh, put in some data. But before we do that, uh, we should set these cells to use the appropriate um, measurement. So, if we're doing um, a measurement of dollars, then we would change that to uh, a num uh, integer with two decimal places. Let's do a, a percentage. So we're going to change these fields to percentages. Now we can enter in the percentages um, for our benchmark and our actual data. It's easier, actually, if we just clear these out first. So we'll put in you know, 4%. Four percent, and uh, just put in some numbers here for the sake of demonstration. Uh, 
and those will be our benchmark that we're measuring against. Now we can put in our actual data. In our example here of, of sales growth, we'll put in some realistic numbers like Um, and there we have created a graph, provided this was all actual data and not made up numbers like mine, um, that tells uh, a very specific and um, important story, namely that the benchmark that the board has set, which is represented by the red line, uh, has not been crossed by the actual performance of the store. And that um, tells our board members that they have but the management is still in compliance. Um, we can further format the graph. Um, any part of it is editable if we just select it and then right click on it. For example, the scale on the side here, we can alter that by formatting the axis. And then you see we can change all kinds of properties. I won't go into it, but uh, also colors, you want to change the colors of your uh, your lines on your graph, etc. Um, I will say that it's helpful to have a consistent coloring across all your graphs, as well as consistent formatting, um, meaning uh, using one or two maybe types of graphs: line graphs and bar graphs, or bar graphs and pie charts, but um, trying to stick to a couple uh, effective graphing types and uh, not mixing it up too much. I'm going to show you in Microsoft Excel uh, another way to do graphing uh, that is really effective, especially for your global ends reports, um, reports that have lots of graphs or if you're collecting a lot of data in a spreadsheet. Um, so I'm just using the Lexington Co-op um, ends uh, data collection worksheet here um, from Tim Bartlett at Lexington in Buffalo. And uh, this is actually available as part of the GM report support um, toolkit on the CBUILD library uh, for downloads. So that's actually just where I got this from. And uh, so here you can see we're collecting a great deal of data um, in over, over the course of a couple of years. And so this is a really helpful tool to build graphs off of because you've got all your data in one place. And what you can do, which Tim has done here and is really helpful, is on a separate tab, he's actually created um, a tab with just all of his graphs, all the data that he needs for the report. And in this case, it's actually even organized by global end um, section. So you can see, you know, global uh, education and, and uh, all their global end policies and the charts that are needed for each one. Um, and this is a really great way to do your graphs because you've got all your data in this spreadsheet, which you're collecting over time. And you can then uh, you can then go back and update these charts for, to include the new data that you're collecting in there. Uh, and then once you have this something like this set up, you can very easily include these in your report um, by simply copying from Excel and then pasting into your report here in Microsoft Word. Um, very simple. And you can see uh, that Tim has restricted himself to uh, a couple colors and a couple styles of graph, um, keeping things really clean and simple and easy to read. They're not overloaded with data. Um, the graphs themselves don't have labels. Uh, with the values of each one, it's just important that the story be told, not necessarily um, the the numbers to the to the, to the penny, um, and that is something that is being done very successfully here in Tim's 
um, data collection worksheet. So I encourage you to check this out. You can download it on, as I said, on the CBUILD library and um, see what some of, some of your other uh, GM compadres are doing. Uh, there's also, uh, I believe, another data collection worksheet that you can look at from another co-op as well.